Okay, well, let's get you a global perspective straight off the bat. Cesar Masri is head of emerging market cross asset strategy at Goldman Sachs. He's joining us right now on the program. Uh, Cesar, great to have you with us here. Appreciate your time here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, so, you know, uh, have markets kind of uh, decided to move on uh, in the US from the uh, sort of inflation is the big worry and rate hikes are the big worry kind of narrative? Because uh, We've had a decent rally to begin 2023, uh, Caesar. What's your view? Yes, I actually think that's a pretty fair characterization. Uh, markets have moved on. Not that there's still uh, no challenges ahead, but they've moved on from, I think, tail tail risks, at least on the inflation front. Um, you know, inflation is still high. It's coming down. It's still uncomfortably high. But I think the wage data we've received the past few months suggests we probably will not see a wage price spiral, so you've sort of eliminated that uh, that tail, and I think the market the market is probably a little bit more focused on on growth risks going forward. You know, the soft landing is our base case, but that's not exactly I think uh, where all market participants are convinced just yet. We also have a big event upon us, Caesar, the union budget, and the, there are several dimensions on which the market could rate this budget from an investment standpoint. Whether it is uh, you know the transparent, incredible fiscal math, or even or even a, a continued perhaps capex thrust, uh, some tweaks in the tax regime. Uh, as an investor and as an onlooker, what would top your list this time around from the union budget? Yeah, I think we've discussed this over several years on the on the program, and you know my view is always you probably want to see you know some pro growth um, uh, expenditures or views in general. I do think, or I'd make two kind of separate points though. Number one is. Uh, I think India has benefited from oil prices coming down a little bit in the past few few months. So I'd be curious if there's any views in the budget as to where subsidies might need to go or what sort of assumptions uh, of oil prices they might make. The Goldman Sachs view is, of course, quite bullish on oil. We think Brent can top $100 by the end of the year. So that's kind of one moving factor. But I think the second factor that I would just mention is Frankly, the, the global investors are really looking at the big picture themes in the world, which is, you know, China reopening, dollar weakness, and whether we'll get a hard or soft landing in the U.S. Frankly, those really remain front and center uh, across the investor landscape. Mm. Hi, Caesar. Good morning. What about uh, India? You know, I, I think in the past you've mentioned that India was relatively more expensive, which is a fact in comparison to other emerging markets. The good news, though, is in the past one year, we haven't done much. So we have gone through a bit of a time-wise correction. What's your view on the Indian markets from year on, and how do we shape up versus our peers, maybe markets in Latin America in comparison to China? Sure. Look, I think on a structural basis, as we've said, I think many times, India remains a core portion of our, of our holding and our investment view. I think there's a very strong growth story that every, every viewer on this program is, is well aware of, so we don't need to repeat. I just think tactically, there are a couple things going on. Number one is rotation. Again, the big dynamic that has shifted in global markets is we've moved from a period of a very strong and increasingly strong dollar to one that's weakening or softening somewhat. And that tends to fo favor other parts of the emer emerging market complex, whether it's in North Asia or in Latin America, um, for example. And secondly, you're dealing with a bit of risk on inequities. India has been fairly defensive. You know, you're talking about rotation. India was up last year, right, in a year where most EMs were down, where the S&P was down about 20 percent. So I think there's just some tactical opportunities elsewhere. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so is this, uh, uh, so just to come back, right, I mean, if, if there is a, uh, not a reflation trade, but uh, uh, if, if, if some of that comes back, right, uh, is it going to be broadly a good year for equities then, uh, Cesar? I mean, money goes into equities, emerging market equities, so, uh, developed market equities. Yeah. Yeah. So in general, again, what we've found in our research is that flows, particularly into the equity market, is not zero sum, right? And so when investors are looking to add money towards DM equities, they're also adding money to EM equities as well. So I would agree with this idea of if we have a bit of reflation, meaning growth data is better than expected. And keep in mind, the consensus view is still for basically a recession in the U.S. So if we sort of beat that expectation, yeah, I do su uh, suspect we'll see added uh, allocations to equity investments broadly. But I would also say, and I think India is a great example of this, 
flows don't drive everything. I mean, as, as you well know, we had foreign outflows from India last year, yet the market was up, and that's because there's a very robust domestic institutional investor base. So hopefully we have to care a little bit less about these flows going forward and focus more on fundamentals, I would say. So you did mention that India remains a core portfolio investment for Goldman Sachs at the moment. What is the best way to approach the Indian markets now? Should you wait and watch? Uh, should you start to deploy some money now? If yes, which are the pockets that you like? Because financials have seen a big fall this month due to an exposure that a lot of these banks have to the Adani Group. And I'm sure you've heard of uh, you know, all the details there. But is it a good time to be adding uh, you know, some money here? Uh, yes, I think that's probably a fair, a fair assessment. Again, our focus in EM right now is primarily in North Asia. Again, I think uh, you know, if we speak just tactically, meaning the next few weeks or even perhaps the next couple of months, the big story is still on China reopening, which I think you can manifest by direct investing there or perhaps in Korea, which is our, which is our top EM, again, tactically. You mentioned a bit on the sectors in India. Look, I, am, I have been pretty optimistic on financials broadly. I understand there's some micro issues uh, that are quite idiosyncratic. We've, we've seen them in other markets in the past, and I think it's hard to make a macro case based on, you know, again, a micro idiosyncratic situation. But I am a little bit more optimistic on the banks. And the thesis there is that we've probably seen a peak in nominal rates if you look at the five-year tenor. And typically in most emerging markets, when you've reached that peak in nominal yields, uh, the financial sector tends to outperform subsequently. So, yes, I would start to add positions in that sector. Okay. Just one last question from my end, Caesar. The government has continued to champion, uh, you know, fiscal consolidation over the past couple of years, despite all the challenges that we've seen globally. If that does continue this time around as well, and we'll hear about it in about, you know, 24 hours from now, uh, the fact that India has managed to contain inflation and the external deficits, um, does this macro stability in India add to its premium, uh, you know, when you compare it to a lot of peers globally? I mean, you briefly mentioned that Korea is your top market to invest into, but um, does India also rate high in your pecking order? So, again, because on the of the reasons basis, that I mentioned. Yes. So, so if, we, if we consider a medium to long term view, call that a one year plus view, the reason you mentioned in terms of fiscal consolidation or I should say fiscal prudence, um, is absolutely paramount. And we would generally want to see you know, some fiscal restraint. Uh, if you look at other EMs, again, whether it's South Africa or uh, markets in, in Latin America, they command a much uh, smaller or lower valuation, I think in part because of uh, fiscal deficits that are a bit wider. So that is definitely a structural story you know, that I think is, is quite strong um, for India if we see a little bit more um, fiscal restraint. However, again, I just think what markets are focused on in the next few months is really who's going to benefit from a weaker dollar and some of the better growth tailwinds coming out of China. That really is the focus for the first quarter of this year. Okay. All right, Caesar. Thanks so much for stopping by. Wishing you a good day and, in fact, uh, a good year ahead as well. Look forward to chatting up with you rather soon. For the time being, though, we'll slip into a short break. You come back, we'll tell you all the top stocks that you need to track for today's action. Don't go anywhere.